Yeah, hello again from uh, Alborg in, in Denmark. Um, I, I saw these uh, very nice greetings from students uh, in, in Pretoria and uh, Roman uh, asked if we perhaps should uh, uh, give a kind of um, response and comment to, uh, to these uh, greetings. Um, there were uh, a number of uh, interesting questions raised by, by the students. Uh, one of them was about uh, meto methodology. Uh, how to, uh, what, what kind of skills should you have to, to study uh, innovation systems? And the first answer is, of course, that uh, uh, you can have very different kinds. I mean, you can, you can be an historian, you can be a historian, you can, in principle, uh, be more oriented to, towards uh, sociology, or you can be uh, an economist, or etc. Uh, but the second second part is uh, more specific tools to study uh, different phenomena. One of my major points in in my lecture in my in the interview was to say that it's a very good idea to have uh, several skills if you are specialized in uh, quantitative analysis, it's very good to have some experience and some skill in qualitative analysis. If you are an expert in doing uh, case studies, it's, it's actually a very good idea to have some skills in uh, analyzing quantitative uh, data, material, etc. Uh, so I think ideally, uh, in, in your PhD work and in course, courses related to the PhD study, there should be uh, a, a combination of those elements. And I'm quite sure that this is also the case for uh, the Pretoria uh, Academy. There was another uh, issue which is more theoretical. Uh, which I try to communicate in the interview, which I'm not so sure went completely through. Uh, I made the distinction between uh, uh, innovation systems at different levels, like uh, 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 sectoral systems, regional systems, and national systems. But I also talked quite a lot about what's called technological innovation systems. And the reason why I did that was that I think that in order to understand uh, how national innovation systems uh, uh, work and function uh, and how they perform, how strong they are, etc., I think it's very useful uh, to combine the kind of interactive learning approach uh, which I have been uh, uh, promoting and working from uh, with some ideas from the more recent work on technical, technological innovation systems. And what I'm thinking about here is that this framework they are presenting in technological innovation systems is actually quite good for capturing how emerging new technologies can be stimulated and developed, etc. And this is, of course, one important part of what the national innovation system has to do. But it also, uh, in order to get economic impact, which uh, I have been mainly interested in, uh, in terms of economic growth and competitiveness, it's also necessary to have the capacity to absorb the new technologies and to use them uh, widely and efficiently. And here comes the broader definition of the innovation system as related to interactive learning, and it has to do both with user-producer interaction and with uh, learning organizations and, and working life. 
So uh, another question uh, was about the comparative perspective. And, and what does it mean to, should you uh, go for having a benchmark? Uh, is there, and, and I understand this question in a sense as saying, is there an ideal national system, innovation system that you might compare with and try to become more similar? Uh, this, I, 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 my answer to that would be no, there is normally no such system. And, and uh, there are two reasons for that. Number one is that the historical context makes a major difference for what is a well-functioning national innovation system. We know that in a certain period, England was completely dominating. In, an, in, a, in, a, in a later historical period, United States and Germany were quite dominating. And, and then came Japan and so on. And, 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 and they all had very different national innovation system and they were matching quite well the specific technologies were, which were the most important in their respective successful era. And another side of this is that being very successful in one era might actually become a handicap in a, in a, in a later uh, era. I think the work by uh, Chris Freeman and Carlota Perez on techno-economic paradigms, etc., in, in a long historical perspective is extremely useful to understand uh, this, this uh, uh, historical dynamics. The other side of all this is, of course, that uh, what level of development uh, the system is at. I mean, are we talking about, uh, and, and where is it located? Uh, the kind of challenges for a low-income uh, country in Africa is quite different from a middle-income country uh, such as Brazil in, 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 uh, in Latin America. So. Uh, and, and then having said that, uh, comparing is extremely useful. Uh, comparing very similar systems can be extremely useful. I was involved in comparing Sweden and Denmark, and most of you would think they are almost identical. But going very closely to look at how they are different gives inspiration for both finding uh, unique strong aspects and unique weak aspects of the respective system and thereby they can inspire uh, policy. Also comparing very different system can in principle be, be give inspiration for a new understanding and also for practical uh, policy issues. Uh, I don't know if there were any other substantial questions. There was uh, a mentioning of the question of new indicators. And, and uh, my general uh, message in, in the interview was to say that there is a very close connection between indicators and policy. When you do not have indicators, there is a tendency for policymakers to neglect uh, this field and you focus on stuff where it's easy to measure. This is sometimes called, called the lamp post syndrome. I'm sure there's somebody among you who can explain what, well, what, why, why the, we use that term. I have illustrated it at some lectures with some people. Uh, so, uh, and, and then uh, the na my next uh, comment and, and therefore uh, we have reasonably good indicators for uh, uh, science uh, R&D efforts. Uh, uh, we have uh, reasonably well developed indicators in the developed uh, rich countries for, and, and also in some middle income countries uh, coming from innovation surveys where we can see the share of new products, etc. And we sometimes have uh, data on patents. And, and what characterizes uh, those is that they mainly refer to innovation processes rooted in the science, technology, 
uh, 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 sequence of innovation while uh, uh, indicators for organizational learning for uh, activities relating to marketing and connection to customers etc uh, what I call DUI learning by doing using and interacting uh, are much less developed so here here is a great work to do to develop new indicators to in a sense uh, uh, put up new lamp posts so we can see what's going on and thereby get policy to, to attach. I would also add to this uh, some ideas we develop here in Alborg now, now for linking innovation uh, 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 indicators to policy uh, that, that almost all the indicators we have now are in a sense indicators of either input in the innovation process or output from the innovation process while we have much less indicators on the inherent structure somebody would call it throughput something going on inside the innovation system and at the same time we know that it's these inherent internal characteristics of uh, uh, the innovation system which determines if it in a specific era is a strong system or not a strong system. So a major challenge is to, to rethink uh, uh, the idea of indicators and look at, at what's going on inside the system. Uh, this relates to network analysis for instance where you can use completely new kind of uh, quantitative inspiration like uh, the, the World Wide Web uh, information and stuff like that. Uh, uh, it relates to to uh, information about uh, uh, market uh, uh, marketing efforts, it relates to get a quantitative understanding of the interconnection between uh, universities and industry, etc., etc. So I think uh, those uh, 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 the idea of of. Uh, but this is again, I would say, to, to calm you down, I don't expect uh, any of you to address all, all uh, these questions about new indicators, but, but you could think about it. I mean, if, if there is, uh, if in, in, in your PhD thesis work, if you, if you, if you can uh, contribute to this in, in a kind of piecemeal uh, 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 way, it would be uh, quite quite useful. Uh, I think also one of you mentioned the phenomenon of financialization. Uh, I think this is uh, 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 in connection with the current form of globalization. This is uh, a, a process uh, which has a major impact on global innovation performance. I think it has a major negative impact on, on uh, 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 the rate of innovation at the world level. And this has to do with, it, it takes attention away from the real sector, including innovation. It takes away some human resources, which are some of the most skillful people are allocated to uh, financial speculation, speculation instead of developing new ideas which could solve social societal problems and uh, also it tends to uh, uh, make uh, uh, it more difficult to, to uh, uh, finance new activities. So I, I think this uh, phenomenon of financialization uh, which started uh, already in the beginning of the 1980s, but it had a lot to do with deregulation, with neoliberal strategies, etc. Uh, uh, has a rather damaging effect on, on the dynamics of, of the world economy. But I see very little analysis of this phenomenon, but I think this is uh, uh, something that senior scholars should uh, think more carefully about. 
Uh, with these words, uh, I want to wish you uh, 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 a very nice academy. I'm sure you have one. You look very happy. Uh, the students we saw on, on uh, the videos and uh, uh, I hope that you will work extremely hard and have a little fun in between. Bye bye.